spoiler alert, Isaac Newton was the man. And we're here to learn about his three laws of motion and forces. Before we get started on Newton's laws, we must establish that a force is a push or a pull. And even though there are four types of forces, we're going to focus on gravity and electrostatic force. Gravity is an attractive force between two objects of inertial mass. The strength of gravity gets stronger as objects get closer or you have more mass. Electrostatic forces can attract or repel. If the charges are like, they will repel, and if charges are opposite, they will attract. But what about the force of physically contacting something? Physical contact was not on our list of four forces, so how can you tell that you're touching a wall? Let's take a closer look. When you touch something, the two surfaces have outer shell electrons that get really close to each other and repel. So all contact forces are electrostatic repulsion. Gravity is an attractive force, which is responsible for matter falling into each other. When objects fall, it's an interaction between them and the Earth. They fall down, the Earth falls up. But because the Earth is so massive, we don't really see it move. Remember that rock star Newton? The first of his three laws says that an object will maintain its state of motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Let's see that again. Because of inertia, when your car makes an abrupt stop, your body is going to continue forward. It's the car around you that changes. This is why we have seatbelts. And for my second law, the net force is proportional to mass times acceleration. In other words, objects that experience a net external force <laughs> will experience an acceleration that's predictable by a formula. Let's try a simple example. Determine the net force required to accelerate a car at 6 meters per second squared. Now this problem is about as easy as they come. You've got two out of the three variables. F net equals M times A. Plug in your values and you're done. Chances are you won't get off the hook that easy and get two out of the three variables right off the bat, but you will get avenues to obtain them. For example, in this graph, we have a way of getting acceleration. Let's take a closer look at these graphs to determine which one we're going to need for acceleration. Now it may be helpful to remember the definition of acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So the velocity versus time graph is the one we need because its slope will give us the acceleration. We can approximate a linear relationship for the time in which the puck was in contact with the stick. So our acceleration becomes a thousand meters per second squared, or a hundred g's. Now we have two out of the three variables, we can use our formula. Net force equals mass times acceleration. Plug in our values, and we get 170 newtons. Isaac Newton's third law states that every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. Remember this soda bottle? Watch carefully. As the bottle propels forward, the apparatus gets pushed backwards. Both feel a force of the same magnitude, but in opposite directions. If a bug is flying along the highway, and a car comes along, smacks into it, which will feel a greater force? According to Newton's third law, the force on both should be of equal magnitude in opposite directions. Now because the car has so much more mass, its acceleration is going to be less due to Newton's second law. The bug is going to have a lot less mass and a lot more acceleration, which is why it's more noticeable for the bug. Now it's because of this principle that I'm able to offer my students a one million dollar reward for them to push or pull themselves out of the classroom without invoking an outside force. I don't. Million bucks, 
But that's okay, because if they push themselves to the left, their face pushes them back to the right. And if they pull to the right, they get pulled back. You can't have a net force on yourself. You have to invoke an outside. All right, let's recap these laws. Isaac Newton's first law is the law of inertia that says that objects will maintain their state of motion unless acted upon by an outside external force. The second law tells you how those forces cause the object to accelerate. F net equals MA. Lastly, third law, every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. Forces always come in pairs, you never find them by themselves. Thank you for watching. This has been Mr. H Physics. Happy studying.